Today on AE Blues, we are going to explore the reverse stabilization technique. We will learn what is reverse stabilization, why is it helpful, and how to set it up in both transform and perspective tracking using native effects, Mocha AE and CC Power Pin, right after this. So first, what is reverse stabilization? Also referred to as reverse motion tracking. It's a compositing workflow where you first stabilize the shot or element, then you do most of the compositing in that stabilized shot. After that, you introduce the motion back. You can do this technique with AE's native tracker using expressions. You can also do it with warp stabilizer VFX. And there are also some third party tools that give you the option to do reverse stabilization. Today, we are going to use native effects, Mocha AE and CC Power Pin. So why is reverse stabilization useful? The reason is that it makes the process of compositing separated from the tracking. You are able to see the element without any movement, so you can composite on top of the shot as if you were compositing a still frame. This way, you can make judgments about your composite as it stands still. Second, and this is a huge advantage, all the effects and layers do not need to be animated to move with the object as you composite. So warping, cloning, rotoscoping, or any other 2D or 3D effect is done on the stabilized shot. And when you are done with the compositing, you introduce the motion back into the shot. Okay, so let's set it up. I'm going to show the whole tracking process. And we're going to start with this shot. Okay, you can see a brick house and the camera is pushing back. I'm going to create a composition. Okay, I'm going to launch Mocha. And I will track the house. I'm going to just use the X line, pick the house. I don't need rotation. I only need scale and translation and I'm going to track forwards. Now that it's done, I can check if the tracking was successful. I can stabilize the shot here and just see that it stands still. Looks fine to me. Now I will save it and close. The application of the tracking is done on the layer itself. We want to stabilize the shot. So what we are going to do is go to the tracking data and create track data, take the tracking from the tracked layer, and we are going to choose invert. Okay, invert means that it will invert the motion so it will be stabilized. You can see the corner pins are at the boundaries of the composition and the top left corner pin is at zero, zero. Now back in Mocha, I should mention that when I first created my X-Spline, Mocha makes the pins at that frame inverted at the composition dimensions. So if, say, I want the fixed position to be in a different frame, all I need to do is just go to my planar surface tool and just move it slightly, push it back, doesn't matter. Just need to register some kind of movement to the planar surface. Gonna hit save and close. And now I'm going to create track data again and invert. You can see the zero, zero is on this frame, not this one, okay? Now for this example, I want my house to be at the biggest. So it's on the first frame. So I'm going to go to Mocha again and just play on the surface, just move it, save, close, create track data, okay. Make sure it's inverted. Now we need to apply the tracking data to the footage itself. The way that I think is the most efficient is not use any of corner pin or transform, but add effect called CC power pin. Now what I want to do is take the information from Mocha. Okay, I want to take the top left from the top left of the Mocha effect and top right and so on. I'm going to use expressions for this. So I'm just going to alt click on top left and just take the pick whip, go to the top left and do this for each of the pins. Now, 
as you can see, the shot is still. Now I can start my compositing. I can take this chimney and place it here, like this. Now, I don't mind that this part of the shot is not totally stabilized. I only care about this part. We're just going to render this. So it doesn't matter what happens here. All that matters is that this house is still. Now, what we should do is pre-compose. I will take the black one, duplicate, and put this with the chimney in a composition called this stabilized. So in the pre-comp is my stabilized shot. And in the master comp is where I'm going to introduce the motion back on the pre-comp. And now I will go inside the pre-comp and set my footage as a guide layer because I don't want it to render. I only want to get this out of the pre-comp. I'm going to go back and I'm going to take the mocha and power pin from the original footage and cut, paste, make sure I'm on the first frame. Last thing is clicking on stretch. Now I got the motion back. Okay, so you stabilize the shot and you composite on still. Now, this is a real advantage if you want, say, to add some effect. So let's add maybe a solid layer and maybe add some kind of particle effect, like particle playground. Place it here. If your effect gets cropped in the master comp, you would want to press the collapse transformation switch and just make sure that in the pre comp, the layer boundaries are big enough to contain the effect. So, all the compositing operations I will do in the stabilized comp. Now, say I want to do some cloning to this house. So I will pre-compose and call this stabilized house. I'm gonna keep the clone tool. I'm gonna choose RGBA, click constant. And with the clones tool selected, click twice and just paint over the house. Go back, you can see it's stabilized. I just want the clone, so I will duplicate and use paint on transparent, so I will get just this. Okay, from here I'm going to move the clone, so I have this, and I got this. I can just set it as a guide layer, so all only this will be rendered. Okay, I can go back, and I got this. Let's see another example if I want to do some warping. Okay, let's try the bulge. Try maybe something like this. And for this to work, I'm going to have to render the background. So I won't use it as a guide layer. But what I would do is I want to have a mask around this area, only the warping area. So I will create another solid, call it a stencil and just set the mode to stencil alpha take a mask just do a mask on the part that i need to be warped okay so just this one, just this part okay going back okay so this is for transform properties but Let's see another example, this time with perspective. So we got this shot of a phone, and you can see there are a few problems here. These stickers are bad, okay, you don't need them. So we're gonna do a little cleanup. We're gonna need to clean up this, this surface. You will see why this workflow com is in very handy. Okay, so first of all, you just need to do your tracking as you normally would. Go to the Mocha AE. Choose the X-Spline tool and just track all of this phone. Now, since there are reflections on the screen, I want to exclude them. So I'm going to choose the Add to X-Spline and just create a holdout 
for my spline. So only this will be tracked. I'm going to use perspective and maybe just add a little more pixels to my tracking. Set my surface tool to be at the corners and just begin the track. You can see it's going to last there. I'm going to fix this later. Go back. It's going to last also here. So let's first of all fix this. See where it's the point in time where it gets offset. It's here. I'm going to choose manual track so I can see the keyframe. Go to my dope sheet and just delete those out. And I'm just going to fix this manually. I'm going to go back to frames and just because I'm on manual track, I'm just take this, and move it back. Okay. Go back forward, go to the dope sheet again. Just delete those keyframes. Okay, go back. Just fix it a little. Okay, so let's see what we got. Uh, let's insert something. I'm going to go back to large motion so I don't accidentally move it. And maybe insert a logo and see how it works. I just want this part to render. I think it's good enough. So we're going to save it and we're going to close. Now we're just going to use the track data, create track data there. Click OK. And again, we need to choose invert. Now I need to choose which frame is my stabilized frame. Okay, just choose a, a representing frame that it's comfortable for me to composite on. Okay, let's just choose this one, frame 65. So I'm going to go to Mocha. Okay, it's going to be on that frame. I'm going to go to the surface tool and I'm just going to move it, move it back, doesn't matter. Just register some kind of move it, save, close. Okay, create track data, click OK. Okay, you can see it's zero, zero. Okay, that's what I want. So I'm going to add the CC power pin and I'm going to link the pins to the mocha pins. You can automate this process later if you want. Create a preset. Now you can see we are stabilized. I'm going to do all my compositing in this composition. So I got this replacement that I want to place here. You can just add power pin to this frame. Now what I need to do is just fix the phone here, just stamp, use stamp to, to fix all this. I'm not going to use After Effects for this. There's too much cloning here. I'm going to go to Photoshop. So there are different ways to export a frame from After Effects to uh, Photoshop. What I will do is use the Content Aware feature to just export a frame. So here is Content Aware Fill, and you can see I got Create Reference Frame. Okay, so I'm going to click here. It's going to ask me to save the project, so I'm just going to save it. It's already created a reference frame. I can see it's here. It's a sequence. And now Photoshop fires up. I'm going to wait for it and just fix the frame in Photoshop. It's going to update in After Effects. What I want to do is just make this frame last longer, so I'm going to go to Time, Freeze Frame, and now it will last. As, as long as I need it to be. So I'm going to do all my cloning in here. Just fix the frame. And when I'm done, I'm going to hit save. Go back to After Effects. You can see it updates. And we got this. Now this is the whole frame. So I'm going to need to mask it. So I will just do this. Let me add some feather. Okay, so I only have this. So now I will duplicate the background. 
and trim the layers. Make sure I'm on the first frame. So the first frame to the last frame. I'm going to just pre-compose, call this stabilized, go inside, choose this as a guy layer, go back. Now I'm going to take those keyframes, I'm going to take the mocha and the power pin, cut, paste, okay, and choose on stretch, okay. So you can see everything works fine, just add a motion blur to this, okay, CC power pin, is also supported by motion blur so maybe some little tweaking but it all works fine so all the adjustments I need to make I'm gonna do them here okay if I need to change the screen maybe do some adjustments here maybe this um, screen is going to be animated so I can just pre-compose the auto attributes let's call this animated screen and inside I'm going to do all my animation so when I go back it's planted here on a fixed frame if I go back it's moving with all the rest so I can do some color correction to the screen maybe add some I don't know glow deep glow you can see it gets it gets cropped by the effect but I can I can fix this in all sorts of ways. I can add uh, row bounds of red giant and just add some glow or maybe do some color correction. Okay, and it's all passed to the master comp like this. Okay, so if I want to refine this, maybe add some blur to the edges or anything, I can do this on top of the stabilized frame. I don't have to link my effects or my artwork to my trackers. And that's it. I hope this tutorial helped you and you will use reverse stabilization in your workflows. Until next time, take care.